I am Daniel Posny, and this is Shifting Perspectives. And today I want to talk about uh, what is my purpose? And this question comes up a lot um, in conversation. And if you get into a, um, an authentic, real conversation with someone, that might come up. Usually we don't talk about this stuff because it's such a, a deep longing inside of us to know why we're here. And I know that um, I had a feeling when I was a kid that uh, I was somehow different. I was going to change the world. I was going to do something great in the world. And I thought that maybe my purpose was to be um, the leader of a rock band, or maybe I would become president, or maybe I'd make some invention or cure disease or something that would, you know, something of the world that, you know, would make something of myself that way. And then, you know, um, you get to be a teenager and then you start, well, me, I started partying and hanging out with friends and um, not really knowing what I should be doing. And so you just numb it. You just kind of deflect your, deflect that thought. And then I joined the military and that deflected the thought for five years. And then I got out and then there's that question again. Well, I guess I should just get a job and then you get a job and it just kind of follows along this path sometimes. And then I got married and we had kids and um, you kind of get in this uh, track of life and it kind of takes, it kind of took me over as, you know, this is life and don't think about anything else. And this is what you're supposed to be doing. You've got responsibilities now. And then after a certain amount of time, there's this thought that comes over you at, after you've had one or two deaths around you, and you start thinking about your own mortality and you start thinking, wow, I mean, people can die earlier, they can die late. And oh, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing? And then you look around you and you see people that are doing amazing things or they're making lots of money and they have a lot of material things. And maybe you're still scraping by and trying to make things work. And that's where I was. I was kind of wondering, wow. Now I'm in, I'm in my 30s at the age that my dad passed. And I started thinking, is this it? <laughs> uh, I mean, on the outside, my life looks really good. I live in Santa Barbara and blah, blah, blah. But wow. So I get a job and I, and I distract myself with being in a beautiful place and, and all the different things that are distractions in our life. And this is it, I guess. And I kind of, like I kind of just kind of succumbed to that and um, I felt like, okay, well, this is it and this is it and I'll just keep on going. But inside I was wishing something would shift some, I would meet somebody or someone would rescue me or maybe I would, you know, end it all and put in another quarter and try again. So that question about what is my purpose, is, it's a very deep question that causes us to really look at ourselves and look at the world and look at the kind of the materials and resources that we have around us and see maybe what we can do with that. You know, if I'm good with mathematics, I can maybe solve this problem. If I'm good, if I'm a programmer, maybe I can create this app or something. So I work with the resources that I had available and I, okay, this is about as far as I can go. I, I got a manager job in a software company without a degree. And I thought, okay, can't go much further than that without having a degree. So I kind of pushed all the limits of my life and still wondering, what is my purpose? What, is, what am I supposed to be doing? I felt like something inside of me knew that something deep was missing. And the thing is that I, I couldn't really see from the perspective that, was, that I was in, where I was eventually headed. But if I kept on going the way I was going, I would never get there. So I needed to, to really shift my life in order to have it take a different direction. And that's when I let go. That's when I, you could say I gave up, I gave up on this life and I was ready to, to experience something else, but I had to completely let go of the way that I was doing life. And that kind of got me on the, on the path of finding out what I'm here for. And to cut to the chase, let's, let's go ahead and if you want to close your eyes, I want you to, to think about, <clears throat> think about anything that's of the world 
that society brings to you, that through living in this society on this planet, as a formulated um, uh, conditional or conditioned way of living, that in this country, there is a president, in this country, there are economics, there are products to be made and all those things. Now take your purpose and disconnect it from the ways of society, the ways that we live our life, that there are, there are cars to be produced and there's a new model every year and, and there are these wars in different countries. Take away your purpose that has any connection with that. And of course, what comes with that is take away any title. I know this is really challenging because a mind wants to connect with the outside, wants to make who we are connected with the outside. But that's a, it's a very um, temporary and um, it can uh, be, what's the word I'm looking for? It can be susceptible to the conditions of the world. So then if it's susceptible to the conditions of the world, your <laughs> deep purpose is susceptible to something. It can be destroyed by some change in the outside world. So we want to make sure that, that our purpose is not susceptible to the changes of the outside world. So now you've got to a place that it's not really connected with, it's not determined by the outside world, roles, titles, jobs, careers. Now let's put that to one side and let's, let's think about what you really are. I know this is going really deep, but let's go there. What you really are as a physiological, energetic being of a tiny, tiny bit of matter and mostly empty space in energy consciousness. So if you're 99.9999% empty space or consciousness or energy, how could there be any purpose? Meaning there wouldn't be any purpose to go and do anything because if you're just energy. Now that energy might have a vibration though. It might have a vibration and a frequency. And in that vibration and frequency, there's an, an intention or an impulse. Now we're talking about the, the kind of the basics of creation. So if that's what you are at the very root of it, I know you're a person, I know you're a personality and all that, but we're getting down to the root of purpose, something that really fulfills from the inside, from every cell. So what is the purpose of energy consciousness with an impulse or an intention? You might say that it is to fulfill that intention, is to go and meet that intention and, and become that energy. Wow. To take that energy that's in maybe a, a chaotic state and move it in so that it blends and becomes that energy. Now, if you take it back even further beyond what I'm talking about, <clears throat> you take into the, the one energy, the one creator, the one being before a form, it wants to know itself. It wants to know itself. So that all those energies, all those frequencies and become all that. <clears throat> but to become all that, it separates itself out into billions and billions and billions Wow. So here you are as an individualized being of the one with a certain frequency, you might call it a signature, which becomes a soul, which becomes personality, which becomes an egoic identity, a personhood and all that. But at the very basics the basis of this is this, this this inner desire that is not a mind desire is not a personal desire 
but this, um, you might call it a repulsion and attraction, this magnetic electromagnetic force that moves towards the energy that is the intention. Wow. So you might say your purpose is to fulfill that intention, to fulfill that experience. There is no inside of this, there's no not wanting to get hurt. There is no wanting success. There's only an attraction. Now let's take that down into that there's a soul connected with this. And the soul has a certain amount of um, uh, individuated um, collection of experiences. And if you believe in past life and parallel lives and all that, then that soul is keep on meeting that energy, meeting and being attracted to that energy to become that frequency. Where do you come in? Where do you come in as the person? Well, in this world, this reality that we're in, it's a very physical world. It's a, it's more of a, um, uh, it's not uh, singular anymore. It's, it's contrast. It's a little bit hardness. It's hard edges and physicality. And, and it's an emotional world filled with an emotions and feelings. In order to live in that and experience that, there needs to be a physical being. That's where you come in. And the way that you think about things or behave about things and react to things are all related to the soul and that original intention, that energy, that attraction. Now, when we look at our lives and we look at what we've been attracted to, good and bad, it's all energy. And to experience the fullness of that energy, all of it is experienced. Now, let's look at the, the person. You can open your eyes. Now, let's look at the person, the personhood, the being, the physical person, Daniel. And he gets happy and upset when certain um, experiences happen in his life. And if those experiences are in alignment, in alignment with that, the frequency that is the original intent, he tends to be happy. And if he's in alignment with that frequency, but on the negative aspect of that, he's really upset. Guilt, obligation, liberation, freedom, they're all of the same frequency, just different parts of it. So the purpose for me, for the individual, the person, is to be happy. That's it. I know right there, my mind goes, yeah, but how do I do that? You know what? What about the world? I want to I serve people. Yes, there is, there is some of that, but at the core of it, your purpose is to be happy and in alignment with your soul. And that's how we become happy if we're in alignment with our soul. And now this takes out any idea that we need to be happy in alignment with our soul and follow the rules and um, not break any laws and not kill anyone. All that stuff. That's not relevant to the purpose of the soul and to be happy. I know that's kind of, that kind of blows your mind, kind of blows my mind when it came out of my mouth. But our purpose isn't to fall in line with society's laws. Our purpose is to be happy. If we're in alignment with our soul, and we're happy. Now, I'm not saying to break any laws. I'm not saying to kill anyone. I just want to kind of take you out of this thing that your purpose has to fit into society's laws. 
that has to fit into society at all. In fact, I might question, what about if you were in a different galaxy in a different planet that had different laws and different society, different things going on? They were a million years in the future or a million years in the past. You would still have the same intention. You would still have the same frequency. It would just be played out in a different way. And if your purpose is to be happy and you say out there that my purpose is to serve people, that makes me happy. But inside of that, that makes you something. And you're falling into some kind of a, receiving some kind of a reciprocation or there's some obligation of someone to give you back something. Then that's one to check. I was in that. I wasn't really happy. Mother Teresa wasn't really happy. She had this purpose of serving God, but she wasn't happy doing it, from what I understand. So if our purpose is to happy, even our obligations to said God might not be in, um, in alignment with our happiness. Big swallow on that one. <laughs> so, however that works out, you really... It's hard to make any real mistakes in this life, you know, in the, in the realm of spirit and soul. It's hard to make any big mistakes. We're in the in alignment with the energy that we're following. And then our body, the person kind of reacts to it in the best way that it can. And I'm not even sure if there are any lessons to be learned. There's definitely experiences to be had and energies and frequencies to become. There are people that have lived the stockbroker life. And there are people that have lived fishing and surfing all day. Which one is happy? The one that's in alignment with their soul. There are people that have lots of material things and are really happy because they're in alignment with their soul. How do we do that? We do that by following our excitement. Then we do that by letting go of those things that aren't in alignment with our soul. And that does mean relationships, all kinds of relationships, jobs, intimate relationship, friendships, all those things that are not in alignment with our soul. No, I'm not talking about cutting everyone out of our life and just <laughs> checking them off our list. Nope, not them. It's more of a, a checking in with myself. Am I excited about spending time with this person? Am I excited about doing this job? Am I excited about taking this body part out of my body? It's about being in alignment with our soul. And being happy. But you have the permission to do that. If you're feeling like a victim that the world doesn't let you be happy, that, that is some deep work right there. What do you focus on? What do you say about yourself? What path do you follow? How do you treat your body? All those things come into play. I wish you well on your path, on your journey to happiness and fulfilling your life and soul purpose. Thank you. Bless you. I love you and hope to see you and, and uh, share with you next time. Thank you.